welcome back to another episode of Unmuted. I'm very excited to say that we have our very first guest uh, today. I'm um, meeting with Member of Parliament for Peace Over West Lock, Arnold Pearson. It is super exciting to have him on, and today we'll be talking about human trafficking. I won't get into too much to it right now, uh, as we see in a moment um, with um, MP Pearson that uh, what we'll be talking about today, but a very important issue that has definitely been left on the back burner here. So I'm very excited to have him on, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to get to it. Um, we'll make sure to put all the info to uh, follow and connect with uh, MP Viersen and, uh, and his office in the comments below, but make sure to keep following uh, MP Viersen and uh, all the work he's doing on human trafficking here. And I'd like to welcome Arnold Viersen, Member of Parliament for Peace River, Peace River Rustlock. Thanks for joining me, Arnold. Hey, Brett, no problem at all. I uh, really, really appreciate your, your work on these kinds of things. And uh, uh, just for the folks back home, uh, Brett was the the ALS guy in, in Ottawa when I got to know Brett in Ottawa. So uh, good good work on that stuff there. And I, I hope your dad, who's the inspiration for that stuff, is, is doing well. Yeah, you know, he, you know, he is um, at the current state, he is, of course. But yeah, thank you so much, Arnold. And um, I'm sure we've talked about Team ALS on this podcast before, and Arnold is a, an amazing member of that team and uh, helped us get some of our petitions out last summer. Of course, that got a bit interrupted with the election, but uh, thank you so much. We were able to post uh, one of the videos out there that you uh, shared one of our petitions. So thank you so much for that. Um, but I'd like to maybe turn the tables here to um, what uh, Chris's podcast is about. Speaking of issues that are muted or put on the back burner or silent, uh, that really should take out more front headings. And one of those issues, of course, is um, uh, human trafficking, which um, when I was working out with Ottawa with um, with you on some stuff, that was very uh, a big um, passion of yours and very something that you've been headlining a lot in, in Ottawa for, uh, for a lot of your career there. Um, now, myself, you know, when I think of human trafficking, trafficking or you know sex trafficking and stuff like that you think of movies like taken where it's a very foreign thing doesn't happen here and uh but you know when i talk to people with like kathy peters and yourself it doesn't seem to be the 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 truth of it it actually seems to be very active at home and i was wondering if you want to maybe talk about about that and how i guess um it's not a foreign thing it's actually very active here in canada and the west yeah yeah, so I usually say human trafficking is happening within 10 blocks or 10 minutes of where you live. Uh, that That is reality here in Canada. Human trafficking is kind of a hidden thing, and, and we don't really know the full extent of it. But what we do know is that when when the interac- interaction with the officials... Um, 99 or 90 percent of the folks that are that of the human trafficking cases that we deal with um, tend to be people from Canada. Um, and so a lot of the trafficking happens like across provincial borders, uh, but it also happens right in somebody's hometown. Uh, one of the one of the most horrific cases that I that I've learned of, it was a 12 year old girl whose parents thought that she was going to school every day. And it turned out that when she left, instead of going to school in the morning, uh, this happened for about two weeks before they figured it out. Uh, she was being trafficked, so her trafficker was just picking her up uh, on her on her way to school. She was being trafficked for the day, and then th- they were dropping her back off uh, at her family home. Uh, so that that was happening right within their own r- within their own city, uh, back in back. So that's probably one of the more horrific cases. But yeah, the the we know that the vast majority are Canadians. Uh, of the cases that we deal with here in Canada. Uh, the vast majority as well, over 85% are uh, women or, and girls. And 50% of those women and girls are Indigenous, um, First Nations girls. So that uh, that is all hor- horrific stats uh, for, the, for the issue here in Canada. Um, and so it, it's been part of my, uh, my job as a parliamentarian is just to raise awareness about the fact that this is happening here in Canada. Uh, most people, when I, when I state those stats, had no idea uh, that that was, in fact, the case. And so uh, I've been working on that since, since I got elected. Um, I didn't it come to Parliament necessarily to, to work on this issue. Um, I came as an auto mechanic from northern Alberta. Uh, I got elected under the leader, Stephen Harper. I was very pleased with him as a as a prime minister, and was happy to be part of uh, his government. 
Um, when I got elected, then uh, things didn't turn out quite as we expected. We didn't make government. Uh, Mr. Harper re uh, resigned as the um, pri or as the leader of our party, and we had a leadership race and things like that. And so um, I, I, I was kind of left on my own, uh, I felt. <laughs> and then I had a, uh, a private member's bill selection uh, of number 37. And so I was up really early in that first, uh, right after I got elected in my first parliament. And so I actually went after, um, I remember just being like, this wasn't something I'd anticipated uh, before getting elected. And so I was like, what am I going to do my private members bill on? And so I actually did it on the impacts of pornography on Canadian society. And it was through that study that I initiated um, that I came to the discovery of this whole underbelly of, of human trafficking here in Canada and, and the connections between pornography and, and sex trafficking. Um, yeah, was, was immense. And so uh, after that study kind of did its thing, I was like, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to go forward with after this? And the, yeah. the community of people that I'd built around that um, suggested like, hey, continue the fight against human trafficking. And so that's that's really what we've we've been working on since 2017. Yeah. And, and you mentioned the pornography industry and what blew me away was that it's um, companies like MindGeek and, you know, which of course are, I'm sure you're, you're no, you know, um, but of course the audience might know, uh, is in charge of um, the company Pornhub as well, um, that really profit off of not just, not just seems human trafficking, but also child pornography as well. Um, has, what kind of steps have been taken to try and take these guys on for, you know, taking advantage of these, this terrible kind of you know, human trafficking that we have here in Canada? Yeah, so the, the connections between pornography and trafficking are uh, immense, and, and sometimes you can't tell the difference between the two. Like, um, mm. um, many times, if somebody is trafficking a girl for sex trafficking, there's times of the day where there's no no pro no revenue stream, and so then they'll they'll yeah use that time to produce pornography, uh, and then upload that to to places like Pornhub. And so that was something that was con that came out of the study that was concerning. I I'd never even heard of Pornhub prior to the 2017 study kind of thing. And after that, we discovered that like I, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but the MindGeek brags about the fact that they are they were the largest porn company in the world um, with the most views and all this kind of stuff. That when when we learned that this company was based right here in Canada, um, that was a real uh, that wasn't something that I was proud of to be a Canadian yeah. and have this, have this right here in Canada. And so we, we worked on uh, bringing awareness to the Canadian public and to the government that, Hey, there is this Canadian company that seems to be in violation of the law. So currently in Canada, it is illegal to share non-consensual images it is also illegal to share underage images mm. and it, Pornhub seemed to be in violation of both those aspects of the law. Um, so back in January, I think it was the spring uh, of 2020, we wrote a letter to the prime minister saying, hey, there's this Canadian company that seems to be violating the law with impunity for over 10 years kind of thing. Um, what are you guys going to do about it? Uh, we didn't get any response from that. Then we wrote a letter in the fall uh, again, to the I think it was to the Justice Minister that time, and uh, that one was signed by over 22 members of Parliament. Uh, and that letter spurred on an article in the New York Times um, called "The Children of Pornhub," um, which then really shifted the ground. Suddenly, the government was the Prime Minister was getting asked about it in his morning press conferences. The government was tripping over themselves to do something about it. Uh, we had an ethics committee study on on the we had brought the executives of of Pornhub my geek to to the House of Commons and and questioned them extensively on their actions and subsequently uh, Pornhub has removed uh, about 80 percent of their content from public viewing and uh, and I like to see that as they call that an admission of, of guilt but um, <laughs> they, yeah there it's yeah. been a, been a wild ride for sure and so I have been working on a bill called the CS Act which would make, which would require companies to maintain documentation on confirming both the age and consent of people that are depicted in their, in their images. And so th that they host. So that's, that's the CSAC. I, I introduced it in the last parliament. I hope to introduce a similar 
Uh, we've tweaked it a little bit, a similar bill in this parliament. Um, and now that would be a, be a part of the fight against human trafficking here here in Canada. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So we are coming close to the end here. I really appreciate your time. So um, I guess one last question here for you is, you know, what's kind of the best way for people, you know, to keep informed and, um, you know, make sure that, you know, they're aware of all, you know, kind of the stuff going on in Parliament itself as yourself and um, all the, what they need to know for human trafficking. How do, you know, most importantly, get this out to their friends and, uh, you know, uh, all the stuff that they need to know that um, <clears throat> that makes this uh, horrible stuff going on here in Canada, just make themselves more aware and help spread the message themselves. Well, the, the easiest way is to donate money to my campaign. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you always got to get that plug in there, you know, um, for sure. Well, but uh, in seriousness, uh, like my Facebook page, I post a lot of things on there. It lets you stay up to date with the fight against human trafficking. Um, you can email my office uh, at arnold.bearson at parl.gc.ca. Um, and I just asked to be on the human trafficking email list. Um, we'd send out an email about once a month, just keeping everyone up to date on what's going on there. Um, and then you can get involved with the uh, local organizations. Uh, you, you mentioned Kathy Peters off the top there. She's mm -hmm. a amazing gal that, that does a, a, a immense amount of work in, in the, in Southern BC, just bringing awareness to, uh, a lot of municipal councils around what is human trafficking and how it's affecting their communities and things like that. Um, there's uh, the other one in BC Lower Mainland is V Case, another great organization that that really takes on the fight against uh, human trafficking. Um, and and so uh, get involved in these local organizations, support them if you can, uh, volunteer for them with them. Uh, it's uh, it's great great. Uh, there, there's great organizations across this country that can use your help and your your interest. Yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll make sure to get your email on the description of the uh, of the posts here and on whatever platform it's gonna all the platforms gonna be on there, so they can get a hold of you for sure. Yeah, and I just like to thank you again, Arnold, for uh, taking the time to talk to us today and about an issue that really um, that shocked me when I first heard about it. You know, Kathy Peters, the one that introduced me to the whole issue and how. It's not a foreign issue. It's in our backyards and here. So yep. it's really great. We appreciate the work you're doing. And um, of course, not just uh, here with, uh, with human trafficking, but stuff like, you know, ALS and so many other issues out there that um, really need more people on the fight, you know, which is why, you know, we started a podcast like this to uh, bring this, these kind of issues out to light and uh, more attention or awareness. Hopefully more MPs will get on board with these kind of fights. And um, I know at least I can say with the human trafficking ALS stuff, they are seem to be growing the more uh, the more that we reach attention so i just encourage you to keep up the fight and of course all the viewers out there to follow arnold Beerson on uh, all the platform social media platforms and to be part of these kind of movements because uh it takes people like you to uh to fight them not just uh, not just our mps so yeah thanks again arnold and uh and yeah we just keep encouraging you to keep the fight and uh thanks for all your work here on als and human trafficking Hey, anytime, Brett, and uh, thanks for having me on your podcast.